Ten years ago, I fell in love with a man two years my senior in the same high school and became pregnant at age 16. We eloped and I gave birth. When I returned home with my child after the death of my husband, with whom I had lived happily for 10 years, my sister treated me like a nuisance. The man my sister married was someone she never expected. Fateful love. The existence of a destined partner. When one meets such a person, is it possible to resist one's fate? I met my fated partner when I was 16 years old. Now I am 26 years old, so that was 10 years ago. My name is Mia. I am a single mother of a 9-year-old girl and a 7-year-old boy. It was right after I entered high school when I met the man of my dreams, Nick. He was a junior in the same high school. And when we passed each other in the hallway in front of the staff room, I felt something and turned around without thinking. And he turned around and looked at me the same way. It was an eternal moment, I can't explain it, but it felt like that. At that moment, we fell in love. Nick said. This may sound strange, but I think I'm going to marry you. I didn't think it was strange at all. I thought so too. I was an ordinary 16-year-old, not particularly beautiful. With only my health as my only merit, but at that moment, I felt as if I was the hero of a story. Nick was so brilliant that he was guaranteed admission to a national university. But he said to me, it will be a student marriage. But let's get married after you graduate from high school. Shortly after he said this to me, I found out I was pregnant. It was the winter of my senior year of high school, an important time for Nick. Nick said he would marry me instead of going to university and working for me and our child. But naturally, Nick's parents were strongly opposed. Nick's family was wealthy, with his father being an executive of a large company. Mia is only 16, isn't she? What about high school? Don't be swayed by fleeting emotions. Think about the future, Nick's father said to him. Why don't you think about marrying after graduating from university? You'll struggle, and your mother is against marrying and having a child at such a young age. Nick's mother also said. Don't worry. I know a doctor who can handle it discreetly, so no one will know. When Nick's father said this, Nick and I decided to elope. Now that I'm a mother, I understand the feelings and words of Nick's parents. It's selfish, but if my child told me the same thing, I'm sure I would oppose it too. But at that time, for us, there was no other choice but to have and raise a child together. And even now, I do not regret that decision. We left a note for our parents, packed our bags, and slipped out of the house to head to LA. We didn't leave without any plan. We sought help from an acquaintance of Nick, whom he had been in touch with online since middle school, and who developed smartphone game apps. What? Nick is a high school student? And his girlfriend too? And she's pregnant? What a mess. The person we turned to was a man in his 30s named James. This is a surprise. I thought they were young, but at least over 20. If I'd known they were high school students, I would have stopped them. But now that they're here, I can't just abandon them. James said this while holding his head and let us stay in his apartment come office. He even became our guarantor when renting an apartment. We must contact our parents once we settle down, was the condition. So Nick and I sent postcards to our parents without our address. Writing, we are doing well. Please do not look for us. Nick started helping with game development at James' place, and James was surprised. What? So when you came up with that idea, Nick was still in middle school? Amazing. To think he could program like this self-taught. Nick had been involved in game development before. I took on the role of cleaning and preparing meals in our combined office and living space. And James was grateful, saying, this is a big help. I usually eat out or live on store dishes and microwave food. 
At the same time as feeling good that helping my mother with cooking had paid off. I also felt a pang of sadness, remembering my parents. Then Nick and I registered our marriage, becoming husband and wife. We didn't have a wedding ceremony, rings, or a honeymoon. But we celebrated by buying a small cake just for the two of us. Our first child was a girl. And we sent postcards with a photo of the three of us to both sets of grandparents. Every Christmas, we send family photos to our parents. The salary at James's place wasn't much, but as he said, I'll give you a bonus if the app hits, and two years later, we received a substantial bonus. Around that time, I remember being very happy because I was pregnant with our second child. Our second child was a boy, and life was hectic but happy for our family of four. Maybe we were drawn to each other so we could meet these kids. Nick said this, adoring our two children, and those days were irreplaceable and filled with happiness. However, nearly 10 years after we left home, one spring day, Nick suddenly collapsed. It was when Nick was 27, I was 25, our daughter Anna was 8, and our son Ben was 6. He had acute myeloid leukemia. I'm sorry, Mia. I've been hiding this from you. Before I entered high school, I had a bone marrow transplant from my brother. There was a chance of relapse, but I kept silent and married you. I'm sorry. Nick apologized to me from his hospital bed. No, even if I had known, I would have married you. I contacted Nick's parents, and they, along with his brother, rushed to the hospital. I'm sorry for being such a disappointing son, dad, mom. And sorry, brother, even though you became a donor for me. But I don't regret it. These nearly 10 years have been truly happy, thanks to Mia and the kids. The postcards you sent always looked so happy, I know that. His mother said, crying and holding Nick's hand. Thank you, Mia. Please take care of the children. Anna, Ben, I'm sad I won't see you grow up. Thank you. Those were Nick's last words. Crushed by grief, I knew I had to be strong for the children. For Nick's sake, I had to raise our children well. We held a simple funeral with only Nick's parents, brother, and some work colleagues we met after coming to LA. Nick's parents offered to have us live with them, but I said, I'm thinking of going back to my parents' house. I've worried about them for 10 years. They understood and said, let us know if you need anything. And Nick's father added, at least let us pay the children's education expenses in place of Nick. This offer was a great relief. I planned to work. But I was anxious about supporting two children on the income of someone with only a middle school education. We decided to accept their help until the children finished compulsory education and agreed to visit Nick's parents with the kids during the school holidays. I returned to my parents' house. I had already informed my parents by phone, but when I returned home after 10 years, they warmly welcomed me and my mother tearfully embraced the children, saying, I never expected to suddenly have two adorable grandchildren. My father said, you've been through a lot. You've done well, and I couldn't stop crying. However, only my sister said, how brazen of you to return after all this time. Things have been tough here since you left, and she wouldn't even smile at the children. Originally, my sister, three years older than me, and I were not very close. Compared to my ordinary self, she was beautiful, smart, and always looked down on me, making fun of me. When I left home, she was attending a prestigious private university but blamed me because a local acquaintance spread rumors that her sister eloped at 16, causing her great inconvenience. My sister is now 29 years old and has been employed at a well-known local company for seven years. Approaching 30, she seems to be actively engaged in matchmaking. Perhaps feeling rushed, and she says to me, did you think someone like you, a middle school dropout with two kids, could raise them properly? 
coming back to your parents' house now is just a nuisance. She complains and makes snide remarks every time we see each other. After I left home, she had been using my room as she liked. So she seemed upset about having to give it up for me and my children. Because of her attitude, the children naturally don't get attached to her. My eldest daughter, Anna, who is strong-willed like someone I know, sometimes brings up touchy topics to my sister, like, Auntie, aren't you going to get married? My sister hates being called a auntie and immaturely tells my daughter. Can you stop calling me a auntie? It's troubling to suddenly be called niece or nephew. But when she is told, but you are an auntie, what else should we call you? She falls silent, looking frustrated. I felt sorry that the children had to change schools. But they quickly adapted to the new environment and were both attending school cheerfully. During the summer vacation, they even spent a few days staying at Nick's parents' house. Nick's parents and his brother, Kent, really dote on the children. They might be spoiling them a bit too much. Taking them out to various places and buying them things they want. Which makes the kids very happy. When I visit Nick's parents' house, they, including his brother, want to hear stories about Nick's time in LA, and I end up talking about Nick, forgetting the time. Nick's brother's name is Kent. Kent doesn't look much like his brother Nick. While Nick is rather slender, Kent is more muscular. And they only really share a similarity in their eyebrows. Kent is lively and strong-willed, unlike the gentle and placid Nick. He's a good storyteller and often makes me and the children laugh. It was about three months after returning home. You come back here with two kids and don't work, you're just parasites. Well, I guess with just a middle school education, you wouldn't get a decent job anyway. My sister said that to me. My mother, unable to watch this, intervened. Mia has been contributing to the household expenses properly. You haven't contributed a single penny since you started working. Can't you be a little kinder to your sister, who's hurting from losing the husband she loved? What? Really? But she's not working. It's not surprising that she was shocked. Right after I returned home, Nick's parents transferred $5,000 to my bank account as child support. They even said they would transfer this amount every month. When I said, I can't accept so much, they insisted, money is not something to worry about. Rather than working, we want you, Mia, to stay with the children on behalf of Nick. I was told just that. When I was told to do it also on behalf of Nick, I couldn't say anything more. I decided to put $1,500 into the household for the expenses of myself and the children. Keep $500 for myself and save the remaining $3,000 for the children's future. Only my mother knows the specific amount. And you know, Mia has been helping out a lot at home. She works as much, if not more than I do with cooking and cleaning. After hearing this, my sister retorted childishly, well, that's great. I'm about to get married soon. Her argument was nonsensical. I don't quite understand what's good about it, but if she's getting married, I think she should learn cooking. Sis, if you're getting married, I think it's a good idea to learn cooking from mom. This seemed to hit a nerve, as she replied, I don't need your concern. I'm already attending a cooking class. I don't need to learn any poor-looking cooking. Hearing this, my mother got angry and said, sorry for our poor-looking cooking. Anyway, it's good news that her matchmaking is going well. Shortly after, my sister's marriage was settled. He's a doctor, three years older than her. In a rare good mood, my sister told me. Hey, Mia, I hate to say this, but could you refrain from attending my wedding and reception? People from our hometown know you eloped, and it's bothersome to explain why you're back. You don't need to come to the family introductions either. It's embarrassing to have a sister who's a single mother and a middle school dropout. I thought this was just like my vain sister. Both my parents were furious, but my sister, having decided to marry a doctor, was defiant. 
I need dad and mom at the wedding, but once I'm married. I'll be part of another family, so I don't care what they think. She even suggested cutting ties with our parents. Dad, mom, it's okay. Let's not fight as a family. I tried to mediate, but my sister scoffed, humph. Playing the good girl, huh, and retreated to her room. Auntie is mean, isn't she? My daughter Anna said this loudly enough for everyone to hear, and my parents just sighed deeply. A year after I returned home, my sister got married. It's true, I felt relieved that she was leaving our house. About 10 days after her marriage, my sister called. I'm coming over with souvenirs from our honeymoon. I was fine not going, but my husband wants to greet his sister-in-law. What? I thought I was supposed to be non-existent. I was under that impression. I accidentally slipped up during the honeymoon. I thought it was impossible to hide it forever anyway. It's fine now that I'm married. Perhaps now that she had secured her marriage, she no longer felt the need to pretend. I guess she must have been quite deceptive before the marriage. That day, my entire family, including the two children, waited for my sister and her husband. When the doorbell rang and my mom opened the door, I was shocked to see my sister's husband. What? Kent. What's this? Don't be so familiar. This is my husband, Kent. And this is my sister and her children, meeting for the first time. Ignore her, she's just good at having kids. <laughs> my sister said this cheerfully, intending it as a joke, I guess. But Kent ignored her and looked at me. Ah. Uh. It is Mia, after all. There stood Nick's brother, Kent. What did you say? Kent spoke to my sister in a low voice. Oh, come on, she's just a shameless fool, just go back in, Mia. Neil. Kent said this with a voice full of restraint, his fists trembling. What? Oh, you don't have to go that far. But since he says so, Mia, kneel. It's you who should kneel. You. Kent said this firmly to my sister. What? My sister, confused, asked him to repeat, and he said sternly. Could you kneel and apologize? This woman is my brother's wife. What? What do you mean? The wife of your deceased brother? Uncle. Both my daughter and son had met Kent several times at Nick's house. They were very fond of him, as he had taken them out before. You said you had a sister who ran away at 16 and had kids, right? Ended up with a strange man and had to return to her parents' house after he died young. That strange man was my brother. What? No. I didn't know. Why wasn't Mia at the family introduction? Why didn't you invite her to the wedding or the reception? That. I. It was hard to say that my sister is a single mother and a middle school dropout. I do think that if Kent had met me during the family introduction, this complicated situation could have been avoided. I agree my brother and your sister were reckless. But my brother left this world saying he had been happy for 10 years. It was Mia and the kids who made him happy. You insulted not just your sister but my brother too. Kent's anger didn't subside, and my sister was in tears. I'm sorry. I just didn't know. Even earlier, what you said to your sister. I'm losing confidence that I can continue with someone who speaks to her sister like that. Kent was still furious. No, don't say that. I'll change, please. My sister was desperate, not wanting to lose her elite doctor husband. However, he said, I need some time to cool off. I'm sorry to father, mother, and Mia for causing such a scene. I'll come back later to talk. He left, shaking off his crying, clinging new wife. My parents and I were speechless, not knowing what to say to her. It's self-inflicted, but what a mess. My mother sighed. 
Seeing my sister cry so much, I did feel a bit sorry for her. She's not a good person, but she's not evil either. Mia. I was wrong. Can you talk to him for me? Please. I couldn't refuse my usually strong-willed sister begging me like that. The next day, I went to Nick's family home. It seems there's quite a connection between our sons and you sisters. Nick's mother said this as she made coffee. You don't have to worry about me, brother-in-law. My sister is strong-willed, vain, and selfish, but she's not a bad person. I want her to be happy as her sister. Please give her another chance. As I said this, Kent made a shocking statement. I know I shouldn't say this. But I think I decided to marry your sister because she reminded me of you, Mia. What? Not just me, but even his parents were surprised. I've been looking forward to seeing Mia and the kids this past year. But I knew Mia was still thinking of my brother, so I decided to marry to give up. I should have waited until Mia forgot my brother. I didn't know how to respond to such a sudden statement. I don't think I resemble my sister that much. You do. Like when you smile and your voice. I thought it was nice, so I decided to marry, but I was wrong. I should have waited until Mia forgot my brother. I won't forget him. What? I will never forget Nick. But, you're still young, and the kids are attached to me. I want to make you happy instead of my brother. I'm sorry. Their father is only Nick. I have affection for Kent as Nick's brother, but nothing more. Kent, you've lost. It's unreasonable to propose to your newlywed wife's sister. No matter the circumstances. Kent looked dejected as his mother scolded him. He's always been a bit selfish and impulsive, not considering others' feelings. Kent looked even more downcast after his father's harsh words. Um, Nick was kind. I never saw him angry or heard him say bad things about anyone. But I was happy when you got angry at my sister. I don't mind what is said about me. But I couldn't stand hearing Nick badmouthed. Thank you. When I said that, Kent seemed to deflate and said in a disheartened voice, Guess it's no good, huh? Of course it isn't. Besides, divorcing now would only make things harder for Mia and the kids than before. She had heard about my sister's behavior towards me from Kent and thankfully spoke up for me. Nick's father is a strong-willed and selfish? Sounds like Kent. You two are similar. So you should be able to make it work. Give up on Mia. His words seem to prevent my sister's divorce. Don't worry, Mia. I'll straighten your sister out. Nick's mother said this with a smile. It was a surprising side of her, usually so gentle. Thank you, Mia. I'm sorry for everything. I appreciate it. Saying this, my sister returned to her husband's home. Before her marriage, she was ready to cut ties with our family. But now she visits quite often, bringing cakes and sweets that my kids and I like. This was unimaginable before. That mother-in-law, she looks kind, but she's so strict. She mostly comes to complain about her life after marriage. It seems like Nick's mother is indeed reforming my sister, as she had declared. A strict mother-in-law is just what you need. My mother's response was a bit cold, but she was happy that the divorce was avoided. It seems my sister and her husband, both strong-willed, have their fair share of fights, but they seem to be managing well. Honestly, I thought I couldn't get along with a man who demands an apology by kneeling. So maybe my sister and Ken are well suited for each other. Sometime later, I got a message from James in LA that a new game was finished. It was the game Nick had last worked on. I downloaded it immediately and showed it to my kids, Anna and Ben saying, this is the game your dad was working on last. The game featured a brother and sister, named Ben and Anna. Yes, they were modeled after our children. 
Dad made this? That's amazing. Is this me and sister? Awesome. The kids were amazed, looking at the game screen. It's a game filled with Nick's love, but I found myself crying and couldn't progress much. Upon clearing the game, the screen displayed, thank you. The same as Nick's last words. Thank you too. I was happy to have met you.